Gang, gang. Yeah. Celebrate misery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Celebrate misery. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. On at night, you know it. Let's have some fun while we all die. That's it. Celebrate dark days, celebrate living. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Thank you guys for uh, for turning me on. It is uh, Thursday, February 22nd. That deuce deuce, that double deuce. That double deuce. I'm feeling anxious. I got that anxious. I got that anxious in me, you know. And that anxious gets in me and my arms. I can almost. Sometimes I feel like I can almost feel the hair growing in my arms. I can almost feel the hair kind of growing in my arms, like a cat, like a cat that's just licking on a, you know, licking on a on an electrical wire, and not sucking on it so you're zapping, but just getting that. You know, and I feel my arms feeling a little electric. I think I've had too much coffee today. And that's sometime that happened when I've had, you know, when you don't drink or do dope, you start looking for that next hit. And that could be anything. Sometimes I find myself, dude, one time I made a coffee, put like probably 19 creamers in it. You know those little creamers? What is that? That's some type of addiction. You know, next thing you know, I'm creamed up. Next thing you know, I'm dripping, kind of just dripping at the corners of my mouth with that soft white dairy drop just flying out of, off of daddy's little, you know, flying off of daddy's little, uh, you know, face creases, just dripping out like that drool, baby. Just like that invalid sauce, just sliding out the side of my mouth. Just, I mean, that coffee was so creamy, I couldn't even swallow it. I remember I'd put it in my mouth and it would just kind of just just find its way out. And that was too creamy. And sometimes you can't get that creamy. But yeah, I just feel anxious. My heart is rattling a little. I feel cagey. I feel cagey. You ever get like that? Feeling cagey. And I feel like that a lot of times. Um, one thing about, you know, being sober and not doing drugs and alcohol is that I get just damn cagey, man. You know, I feel this, I feel this little fire in the back of my neck, and I don't know what it is. It's just a, it's like the devil just lit a match a long time ago, before, maybe even before I was born. The devil just lit a match and just set it at the inside the base of my brain at the very, very bottom. Like, say if your brain had like a landscape, okay, and out there somewhere at at the beginning of the landscape or in the middle of the landscape, there was a wishing well. And you look down in that wishing well and it's just dark in there. And at the very bottom of that wishing well, that's where the devil put a little, just a little flame. And that little flame is just in me. And it's always, it's in me. And when I start, you know, just, you know, turning into that dark night, and when I start dark arting and start being wild, buying liquor or cocaine, any of that, then that's when I can feel that thing getting, you know, heating up, heating up inside of me. And it's, uh, and it just, you know, and if I don't do, if I don't do drugs and alcohol, that flame is still there and it still wants to latch onto other things. So it'll still find ways to, uh, to ignite. And sometimes those ways are, you know, putting 19 coffees in a creamer. Sometimes those ways are, you know, I remember one time I was at the CVS and some kid, some little kid was being an asshole and he was wearing striped shirts. He had on striped shirts and striped pants. And right out of that is, that's the most fucking asshole thing you can do is wear double stripes and not be an inmate or be a, you know, a hamburglar or, you know, or not be a man of constant sorrow and wear double stripes and they have one of those little inflatable basketballs or something that they, you know, is for sale in, 
in one of those little bins or kits, and I just I took that thing out of that little bin, that inflatable ball, and just hummed it at this kid. And it and it hit him strong, where that shoulder meets the neck, that soft little shelf. You know, it's like uh, it's just that soft little shelf. It just seems like a lot, like a it's that soft place, like just like a lion licked you right there while you were being formed. Like you were being formed out of clay and then they were trying to make the perfect shape for that around you where your neck meets your shoulder. And a big lion comes and just licks that clay. And that's where they, that's where that ball hit him real hard, right in that lion lick. And I don't know if I taught him a lesson, but I, I know I taught him something, that boy. And I don't know who he was. And that was actually, it was at an AMP. And they don't have AMP anymore. AMP was a, it was a chain grocer that they used to have. And they had them by me. And uh, and we go over there, me and one of my buddies. And this was a young urban gentleman who was a good friend of mine named Devin. And we'd go over there and buy uh, plums and peaches when I was when I was young. But, um, but I remember one time acting out that way, just letting that flame that was inside of me. You know, it's that flame that says, oh, go do that. Do that. That's bad. Do that. Do that. Do something. You know, that thing inside you that makes you want to growl, that makes you want to just, you know, sharpen, just sharpen your nails and, and just, uh, and just touch and just, you know, touch somebody real hard and aggressively. And that's what that is. And so I think sometimes it's just been, you know, I don't know when I get to feeling anxious, I feel like that, that thing inside of me. You know the the little coffin inside of me that the, where the devil sleeps is starting to is starting to open up a little, and you can see the devil's eyes kind of just come up in that space between the lid of the coffin and the rest of the coffin. You can see his eyes come up and look out into the world and see what trouble he can cause. And I think I'm just feeding I'm just feeling that inside of myself right now. And I don't know what that is. You know I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't think that I'm broken. I just think that. You know, that's my dark art. And uh, and that's going on inside of me. What's up with you guys? Happy day to you. I hope your day is good. You know, I hope it's I hope it's something that you you know, I want you to be inspired. Somebody hit me with that text message the other day. They said, out of the blue in the morning at 7 30. It was today actually. It was the guy that worked at the car dealership. This man, big Stephen Green. And he fell down in his bathroom a couple of weeks ago and, and bruised his ribs real badly on a, a bamboo trash can. But he, this morning, you know, he texted me and he just said, be inspired. That's what he said. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, that made my, you know, that made my nuts kind of square up a little. You know, and I've always wished that I could have square nuts so you could stack your nuts on top of each other when you went, when, when, uh, when you meant business. Because that's one thing I don't like about these round nuts. They just, there's too much room for comfort, for relaxation. As a man, I've always felt like I needed square nuts. That if when it's time to party, when it's time to go hard, you know, when it's time to, when it's time to be active and time to, you know, just when it's time to testify, when it's time to take action, you could stack your nuts one on top of the other. And say, gang, gang, let's go to work. That's where I'm at. And that's where I'm at today. We got that Hamster Ranch video up. It's up for Patreon right now. And it'll go through the Patreon system. And it'll come out um, and just be on YouTube in, uh, in a few days. But uh, that's out there and that's done. And I want to thank everybody for, uh, for being a part of that. You know, and for letting us see them hamsters. Man, I've had, my dreams have been filled with furry little feet. And I've gotten so many questions and inquiries about it. And I just, you know, to see 6,000 of those, you know, beautiful little floor bears all at one time, it just strengthens your heart. And it lets you know the power of Mother Nature. It lets you know the power of Mother Nature. I got some coffee right here today. And this is a single origin uh, year Gahafi blend. And I don't know if this shit is made out of, you know, I don't know how many blood diamonds are in the bottom of this stuff, but it's strong. You know, this stuff will make you, uh, I mean, it'll make you scalp your cousin. It'll make you scalp your cousin. So, I, uh, 
you know, I was in Portland a couple weeks ago, and I didn't tell you guys that I met a fellow over there who didn't have a, he didn't have a, a, you know, everybody have two front teeth, most people. Most people have two front teeth unless they're doing crack cocaine or methamphetamines or unless they're dead. This boy had one front tooth. And the rest of his teeth were all beautiful, well manicured, you know, shiny pieces, elements, strong elements. And and he had he was missing one. And his, he was sitting there with his parents and I said, "Wow." I said, "You know, you out of peace, bro." And his mom goes, "You know, he lost it when he was about 6 years old and he didn't want a replacement." And he's like, yeah, you know, I didn't want it. And people made fun of me for a while. He goes, but now it's one of the coolest. It's, he goes, I feel like it's one of the neatest or coolest things about me. And I had to agree. I was like, damn, this guy, you know, running one light in the grill. You know, this guy playing chess, but he missing a rook. And it was, uh, it was kind of empowering. You know, it was kind of empowering to embrace, uh, to see somebody... You know, just brave to be kind of that different. And I don't know if I have that ability sometimes to brave to be that different. You know, I think a lot about adjusting, you know, or wishing I was differently shaped. You know, and I'm, you know, I go on and off of fits where I wear my neck brace at night because I'm trying to, you know, I've always thought my neck was too short and I've talked about that. You know, I've complained I got medium length arms. And you don't notice it until you, you know, you... You got an opportunity to hug someone or something, you can't do it as well as you wish you could. Or when you, you know, you're playing hoops and all of a sudden your arms, they just feel, uh, they don't feel as, you can't get something. You can't reach for that ball or, you know, you go to shoot the ball and the ball doesn't even really go up above your head. It just kind of goes in front of your face because your arms aren't that long. And just, you know, I've always, I don't know, I don't know if I've always embraced the differences about myself as much as I wish I had. And um, I wonder what differences we'll have in the future. You know, in the future, like people are already getting, you know, big holes in their ears or people are getting impl- like studs put into their face. You know, in the future, I mean, I think we're only probably 10 or 15 years away from people having dorsal fins. You know, you might have a cousin show up with a couple tentacles coming out of his back. I mean, it's the beach is going to be a whole different ball game. You know, when we can do just all kinds of different things, when you could, you know, do some origami and shape your ears, fold them into little swans or, you know, little bitty picture, you know, maybe they'll shape your ears into, you know, your favorite boxer or something, your favorite prize fighter. You might have Muhammad Ali ears or Sugar Ray Leonard lobes. You know, it's just, you know, it's amazing to think you know, that, you know, what things are going to be available in the future. You know, if they're going to be able to make a horn and put it into your skull where it come. I don't think we're far away. I don't think we're far away, man. And when I think about how fast that future is coming, I mean, it's just lightning fast. It's lightning fast, the things that are happening, the changes that are going on. And it's, man, it's just a wild world. It's a wild world. That's what I've been feeling. But yeah, I'm just, I don't know, just feeling anxious today. You know, I appreciate it though. A lot of you guys made calls into the hotline. Uh, We were talking about that war of the states and what that would be like. And so I'm just going to wrap that up a little bit this week. I mean, you know, I'm going to get into some of you guys' calls and stuff like that. Um, And uh, and yeah, what else? uh, You know, I'm, I'm considering get, you know, getting us an actual studio. And I'm going to look at some tomorrow, so I'm pretty hopeful. Um, you know, it's an expense, but sometimes I'm realizing that, you know, sometimes the things in life, it's like you want something, you have to, you know, it's easy to take the easy steps. But then sometimes there's that space where you're like, oh man, there's not a step right here. What do I do? You know, there's nothing, I don't see that stare. And you'll, t- you'll have people that have been higher to different levels or further, you know, further out into their fear, a sphere, you know, further out into their fears, further out into their fear, a sphere. And, and you, and you'll hear them and you'll be like, they'll be like, look, I promise you there's, there's a step there, but you don't know it. And you got to move that leg out there 
and you have to you know know that something is going to be under you or know that something is going to show up or know that at the very least if if it doesn't you know if if something sturdy doesn't surmount under your foot or under the weight of your attempt that you can you can always go back to where you are and i guess you know i mean i just think about that like i don't know it's just you know get a studio and then you know be able to have guests in you know because right now i tape out of the house you know this studio is built this is just my dining room is built out but you know if you invite guests over you want to have guests on the on the cast you invite them over you just like do you want to be you know in your dining room you know is that nerve-wracking if somebody comes over you know i already get nervous when people come over to my house you know it already makes me nervous so i don't know so it's just you know it's just that but then that risk of oh am i going to look stupid am i going to be you know how am i going to be able am i going to feel uncomfortable sometimes with guests and stuff like that I don't know. I guess if I do, I just can say it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That, I guess so some of maybe what's going on inside of me, some of this energy is uh, is some fear, you know, some anxiety. So I don't mean to drop that on you guys. You know, I know this is a funny podcast or it's supposed to be funny. But man, I don't know sometimes where, like to me, there's no separation between where funny starts and where reality goes. There's nothing. I mean, there's not, there's not, there's very little right there. You know, it's like, sometimes there's just not very much space between the two. I had a good time in La Jolla. I was in La Jolla last weekend, and we sold out the shows. And I want to thank everybody that came out with my boy Jeremy Scipio and Young Hassan, two comedy store comedians. They came down with me. Uh, Jeremy Scipio, really funny. I mean, both guys, super funny. You know, two of the funniest guys that I've worked with, you know, as openers. And we're just all so, so different. You know, Hassan from, um, he's from, you know, his family is is um, Indian, I believe, or maybe Middle Eastern. And I'm sure I sound stupid not knowing which one, but oh well. At least I took a shot at two of them. You know, I know he's not Norwegian. So there you go. Bang, bang. And then Jeremy Scipio, you know, and his, uh, you know, kind of a darker skinned guy, urban, you might say urban. Um, but it was great, man. We had a good time. Happy Black History Month if you're celebrating. You know, and, and I was thinking about, like, usually Black History Month is a thing that's, you know, super celebrated. And this year I felt, I don't know, I felt kind of nervous to mention it. I don't know if that resonates with anybody out there, but I felt nervous to... I don't know, I feel like you, like, like if, I don't know, sometimes I feel this weird thing as a white guy that like if you mention stuff or try to be excited about stuff that is, you know, black centric or African American that people judge you for doing that, you know, or you'll get, you know, flack like, oh, well, you know, you're not black, why are you celebrate? This has nothing to do with you, you know, I feel like there's... I don't know. Sometimes it's hard for us all to move forward when you feel like you can't even be happy for another culture or race or ethnicity without getting, you know, accused of being like kind of pompous about it, if that makes any sense, you know? Like, oh, what do you, you know, black, you know, you're not black, black kids shouldn't have anything to do with you, you know? Oh, you're feeling guilty, so you're saying this sort of thing? You know, I feel like, a, 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 I don't know, that's one of the toughest things that sometimes, you know, uh, is to feel, I don't know, this this year I felt it. I felt like, oh, it's Black History Month, but, you know, I feel like if, if I say anything, then people call you like a, you know, like you're just trying to, you know, fake support, or you're just trying to, you know, make yourself feel okay about, you know, you know, white guilt, or I don't know, all kinds of, I don't know, I don't know, just sharing shit that's in my head, so, I don't know, it's a lot of anxiety, I guess, this week, you know, and it happens sometimes, sometimes I get that anxiety, I mean, it's just a weird time, they got the Florida school shooting, people have been, 
you know, a lot of stuff in the news about that. And I'm going to say this, man, if we can't, if we can't keep guns out of schools, then let's say, I say no school, no more school. And I know that might be a crazy reach, but no more school. You know, if people are playing shoot them up at schoolhouses, then no more. You know, and I think about when this stuff started. Because when I was when I was young, when I was in school, this stuff it was that was not a concern. Our biggest concerns, I remember in the office at school, they had a uh, they had alarm thing. And they had regular bell, then they had a button next to it, and it said tornado, and then a button next to it said nuclear. And those were our biggest three fears. And if there was like a fight sometimes on a playground, people would, you know, tangle. A couple of people would tangle up, but that was, that was it. I mean, if I go back in my mind and, you know, I'm sorry if I'm talking about some of this stuff and it's a downer and, you know, you didn't want this as part of your morning and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, I don't get on here a lot of times with a plan as to what I'm going to talk about, but if you don't want that sort of thing, you know, when I was young, that wasn't, I could not even have imagined that. And I'm sure most kids now can't imagine it until it shows up at their school. But I mean, when I tell you that I could not have imagined that, even going back in time in my brain, if a, someone would have showed up at school with a wet, no way. No way. It was not a concern. And, um... And now the fact that that is, I mean, it's become a heightening fear, it feels like. Because this kind of stuff keeps popping up wherever. And I'm, you know, I, I, and people could say it's for, you know, what, what causes it. And there's, you know, there's obviously there's certain factors. There's mental health. There's weapons. You know, those are, those are two elements of it. For sure. You know, there's there's probably a, a mix with a lack of connection at the same time where people aren't as connected to other people. So the value of a life doesn't, it's not, it doesn't, you know, your life doesn't hang, you know, other people's lives usually hang inside of you like ornaments on a tree. You know, they hold a certain amount of weight and they, you know, they're different. They look different. Some of them are snowflakes and some of them are, you know, beautiful orbs and some of them are, you know, crazy, unique pieces of art, but they're all like ornaments. You know, other people's lives you interact with, they become ornaments kind of that hang inside of you. And, and you, 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 you learn to value those ornaments and know what they look like and are shaped like and what colors they illuminate by 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 interacting with those people that's how you know that's how you know how much you care about someone that's how you know how much love you have for someone by interaction and i wonder if as we you know is some of this the repercussions of us not interacting as much as humans is it video games I mean, video games huge thing and people could say whatever video games don't i Man, there wasn't a game when I was, I mean, there was games, there were certainly games where you could, sh you know, there were shoot em games where you were shooting other people in war. You know, there were bombing games. I remember airplane, there was, you know, Super Mario's where you could throw fireball. You could throw fireball at somebody, at another Italian or another dinosaur. But they didn't, it wasn't as, you know, they didn't have these games where you're walking through buildings with guns. And if that, you know, if that's so much of your, you know, if you spend so much of your life in front of a screen and that's the only place you get acceptance and you're already damaged, what does that all look like? How does that play out? How does that unfold? It's just, man, it's just harrowing. It's harrowing to think. And I didn't mean to get onto it, but otherwise I shut down the schools. Have people learn online or learn at home. You know, we can't do homeschool because there's nobody at home to teach kids anymore. You know, two, both parents have to work. Oh, you know, I kind of wish we could, they, we could just freeze everyone in America for, a, you know, for 48 hours or 72 hours or a week. 
just give everybody's brain a vacation. Not like a vacation like on pills or something, but just a little bit of peace. You know, I wish they could just put a drop of gas all over the world that just, you know, whenever you s inhale it, you know, you know what other people's lives are like. And so suddenly you have every you get all these other perspectives of what people's lives are really like, and immediately you would know how to act and behave because you have that perspective, like an empathy gas or something that just immediately when you when it gets in your lungs you just you are overcome um, with empathy for others and with perspective. Because it's competitive, man. There's just so much competition out there. There's so much competition. You know, it's like with social media and everything, it's like there's, a, there, it's like there's an electronic score to feel good. You know, it's like you have to get likes and you have to get or, you know, these things. And this all could be because I'm living in L.A. You know, I could be fucking you know, just drowning in a swamp of bullshit out here. And I, I understand that. You know, I live in the nation's capital of greed out here and singularity and me, 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 me. But it's, you know, you wonder if, if because we rely so much on, you know, these electronic, this electronic scorekeeping for our values or for what makes us feel valued, that, you know, if you are somebody who's, you know, spends most of their time playing video games and you and uh, that if the world just doesn't turn in to one for you at a certain point, you know, and then it's just there's no you can't separate what's, you know, real and what isn't because you've had so much of what isn't real. You know, like a first-person shooter video game or something. You've had and you've had so little of what is real, like human connection. I don't know. It's scary. It's a scary time. So what do we do? What do we do? We get somebody. We get each other. Hold somebody's hand. You know what I'm saying? Put your finger in somebody's ass. Put your finger in your own ass. And put, you know what I'm saying? Write somebody else's name on your finger and put it in your ass. You know, Janet or Barb. You know, you do something to to feel connected. Touch somebody on the neck. Touch somebody in that lion's lick. Put your hand right there. Let them know you care. You know, take the afternoon off and take your kid to the park. You know, don't put him in double stripes, bro. I'll throw a fucking I'll throw a fucking baseball at that kid. But uh. But that's what's going on. I'm rambling. I know I'm rambling. Sometimes I ramble. You know, I'm a rambler. I'll tell you what else. Gray Block Pizza. Get that hitter. I'm going to read something out of their menu right now. They got that Nevi Bianco. Red onion. Some onions, you know, they're whatever. They show up. They don't know what color they are. You know, they're gender neutral or whatever. Red onion. Fresh sliced tomato. Some places you go get the pizza, it's the full tomato sitting on there. You're like, what the fuck is this? You know, you bite into it and suddenly there's a gardener across the room staring at you. Like you just molested his, you know, like you just molested his uh, favorite fruit or vegetable. Mozzarella. Fancy cheese. Ricotta. And they got garlic, basil on a garlic pesto sauce. And that's gray block pizza. Get that hit up. And you can, uh, you can check that out at 1811 Pico Boulevard in Los Angeles. And they got another place opened up. It's called Bronx Born Pizza. And that's up there in Bend, Oregon. So if you get up there in Bend and you're out there in Evergreen Country, or I don't even know where Bend is, but if you're out there and you bend in around, why don't you bend on over to uh, Bronx Born and tell them Theo Vaughn sent you and tell them you want that hit up. Ah, oh, dude, I look, bro, I got into the worst shit. I fuck, I left. So listen to this. So I go down to La Jolla, right? And I, lie, I put my car at the train station because I take that train down for relaxation. This traffic, man, the traffic, it feels, I start feeling disconnected. And I, I you know, I take the train down 
and I lost my keys in La Jolla, lost my car keys. So I get back up, can't get into my car. So I go to the dealership. They tell me I got to order a key. It takes three days to get the key. So now I can't get my car to the parking garage. I had to order the key. The key's coming. You know, fuck. So now I won't even get the key until Monday. And so my car at that point will have been in there for 10 days. 10 days in a parking garage. And uh, no car. I've been having an Uber. And Uber's wild, man. Uber, you get out, you know. Some people want to talk to you. Some people don't. Some people want to tell you their life story. Some people are trying to score dust. Some people want you to, you know, want you to listen to their album. You know, some people want to smell your breath. They got wild people out there. And I sit in the front a lot of times. I don't sit in the back like one of these straight mooks, man. I sit up front. You know, I'm mupping around with these cats. I'll sit up there where we can smell each other's breath. You know what I'm saying? Where we could rep lunch on each other. And that's how I do it. Man, we had a great conversation. I felt like on Monday's episode about the about the uh, about the states war and what that would be, what that would look like. Man, I can't tell if I'm crazy. Here's what I can't tell right now in my mind. I can't tell if I'm crazy for thinking that America will continue to become more separate, or if it's just all a fad that's out there in the media and. I am obviously affected by it and have bought into it. That's what I can't tell. I just can't tell. You know, I know people are really divided on, you know, what's going on and, you know, what their America looks like and their idea of America. Um, it's just, it's, it's crazy. So I can't, you know, sometimes I can't decide if like a, if, you know, in a hundred years, if I were to, you know, wake back up out of the great eternity. You know, or if I were to straight up, you know, spelunk down from heaven, because you know daddy's going to H-Town. I'm saying I ain't playing around out here. I ain't trying to end up in hell. I ain't trying to end up all hellular. I'm trying to go up top. That penthouse. That penthouse for my Pittsburghers. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it just makes me wonder if, you know, what it... If it's if that's a real thing, if I came back in a hundred years, if this if if all the states would be divided, if there'd be like a little group here, a little group there, you know, and or if it would just be just moving along, we'd all just be you know living off of Amazon and stuck in our own little universes in our homes, you know, what that future is gonna look like, what's going on? I just I don't know. I'm in a whirlwind. I'm in a whirlwind. Sometimes we are. Sometimes we are. That's why you got to batten down your hatches. How do you do that? Find something that's real. Touch somebody up on a lion's lick. Fuck somebody. You know, fuck somebody you love. Or love somebody you fuck. You know? Have a dessert with somebody. Split a brownie. Split a lemon bar. Split a lemon bar with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Buy somebody's coffee when you're at the counter. You know, you see a mother struggling up there at the thing, hit her with an extra box of fucking uh, uh, loops for her kids. Hit her with an extra box of loops, you know. Sneak $20 into her cart when she ain't looking. You know, you, you got to connect with somebody. You know, stop in at the library. You know, walk back in a, in a, in a periodical. Show somebody you're fucking nuts, bro. Make somebody feel something. You know, I'd love to see somebody, you know, just... Just walk into an Arby's and and just, you know, give out free little pieces of chocolate to everybody at Arby's. Just chalking up Arby's. Because we just need, we need infections of that, of that vibrant heartbeat. You know, I wish I had a fucking, I wish I had a bunch of, a million little hearts. I'd put them in my hand and just start throwing them at motherfuckers. Bam! You got loved up. Bam! Bam! Ba, bam! 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 Aortas for shorters. Daddy's loving everybody. Get me a little heart cannon, just fire hearts off into the distance. You know, a couple of lesbians running on the beach, bam! One of them gets hit by that, by that, uh, by that beat maker. Poof! Caught right in the chin. Her, her friend Sandra, or whatever her friend's name is, helps her up. What happened to you? You know, Linda. A lot of lesbians are named Linda. One of them helps her up. What happened to you, Linda? And she just, all she knows is that Linda had been hit by love. And you know, we got to get some love loose in this world. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? 
because it could end up you know if, if shit gets if shit gets lit down here people are ready if people i feel are people caged up are people ready enough to go to war the war of the states what would it look like you know where i figured it out at last episode i broke it down you know i felt like you'd have georgia you'd have texas You'd have that Midwestern clan really led by Ohio, and they would probably, you know, uh, settle up in Chicago. That would be their center hub. You'd have that Pacific Northwest would all kind of merge over there into Utah or Idaho, up in the high hills over there, over there, if there's something over there. All the Montana, the Dakotas, all of them come down and end up over there. You know, you'd have that Northeast, that Syracuse. And I bet people from Philly would merge better with people from upstate New York than they would with people from the rest of Pennsylvania. Or with New York City. I think it's just more like, this just seems to me like more like like types of people. You'd have them merge up. And so then that's what your universe, that's what your America would look like. That's exactly what your America would look like. And you'd have Hawaii sitting out there. Just pineapples. Titties probably. Titties, long dick. Everything out there. Everything you want. Vagina, everything. Uh, pork. Everything, pork salad, everything out there, snacks, pineapple upside down cake, pineapple treats, frozen pineapples, everything, orange slices, boats, everything, joy, people doing it all out there in Hawaii, that's where they would be doing it, Dog the Bounty Hunter would be the president out there, you know, long people doing all types of naughty stuff. And, and that would be probably the, one of the, that would be really a wild place. But I know you, you guys had some thoughts on it too. I'm going to crack into a couple of your thoughts. Uh, I'm just going to hit a little bit of this hotline in just a second. You know, about that state's war. We had a lot of people called in about it. I'll be in uh, Tacoma, March 15th and 16th at the Comedy Club. March 17th, I'll be at Spokane. Spokane, I'm sorry. April 6th and 7th, I'll be in Tampa, Florida at Rock Brothers Brewing. Tampa, those tickets are now on sale at theovon.com slash tour, T-O-U-R. April 20th and 21st, I'll be in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey at Bananas, uh, Banana, that's Spanish for banana. Also, you can go to the reddit.com, I, uh, I got my own reddit out there, reddit.com slash r slash theovon, that conversation is going to start popping, we're going to do some AMAs on there soon, so just wanted to let you guys know. I want to thank you guys so much for calling in and hitting this hotline. Um, I'm already excited about next week's episode. This has been a crazy week. You know, I've been shooting that pilot still. Today we had, a, today we had basically we took someone who had called into the podcast and we had him show up today. And we tried to, you know, help bring some solution into their life uh, in real time. And man, we had, a, we, it, it, we had so much fun. We had Ron Funches on today. If you haven't spent time around Ron Funches, he is, I've never seen anything like him. He's one of a kind. You know, he's a national treasure. And we got the pilot done, you know, and it's long days on there. And you can't think about anything else. It's hard to focus on other things. But tomorrow I'm going to look at some studio space. You know, I want to get some guests in. You know, I got my, I got Boosie. I want to get Boosie in out of Baton Rouge. You know, my, one of my favorite rappers of all time, Boosie and Nelly. You know, also, I want to get Gerard Butler out there and tell him how I feel, you know, and how I felt when I see him and how I feel about when I, you know, see that man. You know, I have some ideal guests. You know, a couple of my favorite authors. I want to get people in and be able to have them in studio. You know, having them, having them at your house is weird because you have somebody over. You got to do everything. You know, you got to make sure they ain't... You know, popcorn crumbs on the carpet. You got to, you know, you know, get, you know, catch those fucking, you know, they got turd freckles on the toilet bowl. You got to shine them down. You got to do all this extra stuff. You got to light a, a candle. You know, you can't fart all evening. You got to make sure you do stuff to make it exemplary for somebody. Because nothing shadier than going over to somebody's house that's, that's, you ever go to somebody's house that stinks? You ever been to somebody's house that stinks and they don't know it? You walk in and you're just like, and they're like, I live alone. And you're like, no, you don't. You live uh, with the ghost of shit's must past. 
Because it smelled like a bunch of doo-doo spirits up in here. That's what it smelled like. You get into somebody's house and it's just, I mean, it. you know, you don't even have to, you don't have to look around for it. You don't have to wander. You don't have to be a, you know, smell gelling. You don't have to circumnavigate that house to know that that bitch stunks. Some people houses smell like they just been hiding doo-doo and stuff in their house. Like they got a, a crock pot under, under one of the beds or something. With a couple of warm, uh, you know, a couple of warm body turds grilling out. You know, or somebody, or they, you know, somebody hit a couple of, uh, you know, uncooked fish sticks somewhere in their boudoir. You know, or something. Some people, you go to their house and always, if it hears the thing I notice, if your house stinks, it's hot. That's why I want to know what is up. Hey, if your house stink, cut on the air conditioner. Because you know what's worse than just stink? Hot stink. Cool your stink off. That's going to help people for if they're coming over. You got a bunch of stinky ass blankets and shit? Wash your house out. If your house is dirty, wash your fucking house. Open the doors. It's spring cleaning, man. And we're going to talk about that in two weeks. Spring cleaning. Monday, I'm already, you know, we got a lot of stuff that's been coming in about marriage and relationship. We're going to get into some of that come Monday. But after that, we're going to talk about spring cleaning. Because if your house stink, freshen that thing up. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you got to tie a couple slices of lemon around your sister's neck and have her sleep over a little bit. Get your house scented well. Because it's, you can't be living in stench. You can't be living in stench. Let's hit some of, these, uh, some of you guys' message from the States War. You know, you guys had a lot of thoughts. And look, I love this topic. Because, man, this, uh, you telling me America can't civil war? We did it, what, 150 years ago? How long ago? 200 years? I don't even know when we did it. That's all. Look, I'll tell you right now. Let me look it up. I'll look it up on the computer. Civil war dates. 1861 to 1865. That's 150 years ago. So that's only three people ago. Three people ago, we were civil warring. So you think it's that far-fetched that we could do it again? The American Civil War was a war that was fought in the United States from 1861 to 1865. War broke out. Over slavery. War broke out in 1861. And this is from Wikipedia. People, you know... Have all, say all different reasons why the war broke out, etc. But I'm telling you, that's what it says right here. I'm reading that off of here. So if you're telling me that at a certain point, war might not break out because maybe 1% of the population has all the money or some people have all the money, could that happen? I don't know. I don't know if that could happen because poor people don't like to, poor people do not work together a lot of times. You know, poor people, as long as they have poor people divided, you know, I, I don't see that happening. But what's going to be that ire? What's going to be that thing? Oh, man. It's an, but it's exciting too. It's exciting to wake up and be like, shit, I have, today I have to st- think, I have to stand for something. Today I have a reason. I have a little bit of purpose. I believe in this and I believe in that. Or I don't even know what I believe in. That's where I'm trying to live at sometimes. I don't know. But I'm ready to learn, baby. I'm ready to take an L. I'm ready to take an E and an A and an R and an N. And I'm ready to learn up. Let's hit a call right here. This came in. Boom, boom. Live free or die, Theo. Live free or die. That's what New Hampshire's coming with. Dude, we, we, all, we all rock together with that shit. Believe it. Live free or die. You heard him. And that's, uh, this is your boy Rico coming out, in, out of New Hampshire. Calling in about that state's war. Tell me more, Reek. Is Rico. And let me just say this. Who's going to call in saying that their state isn't going to win the war? What kind of what kind of mentality is that to go into war with? That's fucking brutal. Well, they got some kind-ass states out there. You know, what is it? Somewhere is the land of lovers. Where is that place? Well, look, you try to hug a motherfucker with a machete? Gang, gang. You're going to lose that hug. More. 
for and for anyone to call up and say that their state isn't going to take I don't even know what that's about. Well, they had the guy from Maine that called that I don't, I don't even know onward sorry interrupting you. Onward Rico. I have no do you have no no passion, no love? Your hands is taking it, bro. It's small enough where we all kind of know each other. We got those crazy motherfuckers down in Seabrook, down on the coast. What? Dude, first of all, small enough where y'all know each other? Dude, this ain't a quinceanera, man. This is a war. You can't be, you know what I'm saying? You can't be like, oh, Randy just got here. That shit can't happen on the battlefield. This ain't a pickup game. You know? You can't be down there and be like, oh, who's, who we dressing out for this? Man, come on, man. Seabrook? You said we got a, oh, we got those mad hatters down. What'd you say here? Let me listen to this one more time. Let's hear this. All kind of know each other. We got those crazy motherfuckers down in Seabrook. Down What's Seabrook? Penitentiary? Down in Seabrook. What is Seabrook? It sounds like a rich people uh, homestead area on the water. What, you got rich people down in Seabrook? What they doing? Driving sobs? I mean, you can't, what, they, what are they going to do? Throw fancy uh, jewelry at people. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't fucking. You can't beat. You can't beat somebody to death with a with a uh, wristlet. You know, with a with a 14 karat gold candelabra. This ain't Clue. This ain't Clue the board game. You got to come with something real. Let's hear more. Look down on the coast. I think we got like 13 miles of shoreline. We got those Hampton Beach critters. We got the mountains. What mountains, dude? The mountains of New Hampshire? What do y'all got, man? I'll look up this fucking cat shit claim right now. Mountains of New Hampshire. What do y'all have? This say right here, Mount Washington, 6,200 feet? Shit. Listen, Rico, Uncle Rico could throw a football over that thing. That ain't nothing. You got Loon Mountain, 3,000 feet? Dude, I'll backflip off of that bitch. What else y'all got? Nothing. Wildcat Mountain. I'm looking at the picture, the first picture of it right here on uh, on Google Images. You got two thick, frosty whites hanging out by a sign. Say toilets this way. Man, this ain't a fuck. Y'all ain't got an army, bro. This dude got man tits right there. He got tits hanging off his elbows. He got them elbow titties, boy. Come on, man. I'm going to let you go a little more. Let's hear more, Rico. Canadian border. Okay, now you got the Canadian border. That's huge. We got those wild boys out in Keene State College. We got Plymouth State College, Dartmouth. We got them drawing up schematics, dude. New Hampshire is taking this shit. It's not, I'm going to be honest, it's not even close. Not even close to what? You got people drawing up schematics? What is that? Schematics, dude? This ain't, uh, this ain't the Iditarod, brother. This ain't cross-country skiing, man. This is war. You got people out at Keene State? Do you how bad are colleges if they say it's Keene? Come on, dude. Keene State? Come on. There's not a lot of us, but we're here. We're here. That's your motto? Dude, that sounds like a shitty motel chain. We're here. Onward. We're gonna take over Maine quick, believe that. Oh, I believe that, dude. Maine ain't nothing, bruh. Maine up there eating poisonous berries, dude. You know, it's a bunch of stoners acting like they know what the wilderness is about. 48 hours outside, bruh. They'll be in that freezing cold rain, accidentally eat a poisonous berry. Gang, gang, done. Call of the wild. Let's hear more. There's townships in Maine that are not incorporated into the United States. That's how just vacant it is. So we're going to move in there, take over Maine quick. And uh, we're just kind of going to kind of lay low. That quick takeover main thing to keep and lay low. Lay low, bro. Y'all going to be tired. Lay low. Y'all hopped up on syrup, New Hampshire. Man, look, I respect it, but I don't see any chance, bro. No Hampshire. You got no Hampshire, dude. The coolest thing y'all will have is a flag that have a hamp on it, baby. Gang, gang. Onward, let's take another call here, repping, uh, repping Cali here, and this is about that state civil war. Let's hear more. What's up, Theo? This is Mondo calling from California. Uh Mondo, and that sounds like a Spanish name. Mondo. 
And um, Mondo, I don't know what it means, Mondo, Mondo, Mondo. It sounds like it means, uh, you know, Mondo, ooh, Mondo. Mondo sounds like a strong man, or he used to be strong, and now he's, you know, letting himself go a little bit, but the ladies all remember him as strong, you know. Ooh, that's Mondo. Here we go. Thank you for calling Mondo. Um, I heard your input on California saying you think everybody would leave, but I don't know. I think we'll, we'll hold it down. You know, California has those gangs too, man. You got to take them for account. And all those people that aren't from here and those, um, immigrants and stuff that we got, they'll be the first on the front of the line that we'll put to, you know, have them take out. Yeah, they could do some damage, you know, get a crackhead or a, or a wino fighting for you. Now I'll say this. Now look, I'll comment. A crackhead will be the best lookout. Because crackheads can go for about 86 hours before they die. I mean, they're basically like, it's like getting a, you know, one of those remote control cars and just running the battery straight. About 86 hours, crackhead, up all night, look out, look out. You know, they'll take apart a tank, they'll do whatever. Crackhead will be all up all night. You know, you wake up in the morning, crackhead caught three rabbits and sold all your guns and everything. You know, that's the only thing. You don't know what kind of trades they're going to make in the middle of the night if you have crackheads working with you. And then you got the gangs. That's true. You got the gangs, but but gangs are always here. here what, what word do you hear with gangs? Rival, rival gangs. Are gangs gonna work together with anybody? Mm mm. Gangs gonna be fighting each other for small territory. Now, gang gangs are used to claiming territory, so you're gonna have that right there out of the gate. You know, these gangs are going to be used to repping territory, but I think you're going to have so much inner friction between those gangs, they're not going to be able to uh, coagulate and form one cohesive unit. Before that, you said what? You said oh, uh, that I thought a lot of people would leave. Well, I think that people in militaries are going to leave and go back to their respective home states where their home family lives. I don't think just because you're stationed at Fort Polk or Fort Benning or Fort Bragg that you're suddenly going to stay in Louisiana or Georgia or, or Kansas. I don't think just because, you know, you're stationed over at davis Montan Air Force Base, and if you don't have any children or your family there, that you're not going to go and fight for your home territory. You know, that's the, those are the people that I think will leave. Illegal immigrants, what are they going to do now? That's a tough call. I don't know. Fuck, I'm not supposed to be here, and now they want me to fight for this place? Deuces, baby. Deuces. You know, I was at a, um, what is that chicken place called? I was at a Church's Chicken. And you think it's kind of a religious thing, but it's not. It just says churches in the name. You go in there and it's damn, I mean, it's the devil, you know, it's the devil running a deep fryer. And I was at this Church's Chicken and shit broke out in there one time. And I kind of, you know, they had a couple of people fighting in there. And I'll be honest, it was a couple of brothers and sisters, man. And, you know, they like to fight at fast food places a lot. You've seen the videos online. I'm not going to pretend this isn't, a, this isn't a, a thing that happens. And so then the people at the, you know, they were arguing with the people and fighting with the people who worked at the, at the churches, at that chicken house. And the people at churches, the dude's like, dude, get back here on our side. Motherfucker, I don't want to work for churches. I don't have, I ain't having a, you know. A strong brother fucking deep fry my arms just so I can defend a couple of nine pieces and y'all motherfuckers. I'm out of here. That's when I left. I ran out the back door of that churches. You know, so I'm saying I've I, I've been I've run through the kitchen of a fast food establishment. So when you're looking at me, know that about me. People sometimes are like, well, wonder what that dude's done, wonder who he is, what's up with him. Well, I'll tell you straight up. During regular business hours, I've ran through the 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 full the the full breadth uh, and 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 space of a fast food establishment and ran out the back door. Okay, I've gotten that that hit a hot, dirty garbage right when you hit open that back door and you feel that you know that waft catch your neck. I've gotten that, but what I'm saying is that's the same thing about illegal immigrants. When the shit hits the fan. And they don't work for the fan? Bro, they ain't staying to fucking... They ain't staying to, th to, to, to weather the shit storm. Dog, when shit hits the fan and I don't work for the fan? 
sayonara. I ain't staying here. Illegal immigrants will be gone. Hey, stay here and defend California. Motherfucker. I'm from Venezuela, dude. I'm from Toronto. Bitch, I'm out. So that's what's going to happen there. Let's hear more. Thank you for calling, Mondo. And then you got all them gang members with them guns and whatnot. And then you just got all them savage farmers we have. So I don't know. I think I think California will take it all, you know? Well, now you guys do have a huge population. And somebody called about that the other day. If somebody has a large population and they have a lot of guns, you know, and even if only one out of 10 people is armed, if you have 100 million people, then that's which no state has. But if you have 30 million people, then you, you're going to have 3 million guns in your state. That's a lot. Let's hear more. We got the mentality like nobody. And everybody who comes out here, they're out here pursuing something. So they're fighters too, you know. Maybe they might stay back up California. You know? you know, you're not from here. Bogan's not from here. But you guys will sure put up a fight for us. You know? So I think California has the upper hand with everybody that is here. Nope. Look, Mondo, I mean, look, you have, and it's obvious you have a lot of state pride, and I respect that 100%. And I respect your opinion. I respect your opinion. But, I, dude, ain't nobody staying out here? You think I'm staying out here next to some of these lily motherfuckers out here in Los Angeles? All these people over here, all these accountants and bullshit artists, all these agents and muppets. And PR's bullshit. Man, they, I, they ain't staying in my house. They ain't sipping off of daddy's candle soup. You know, I'm sp uh, that split P is for me. They ain't getting this. So I'm saying, I'm not going to stand shoulder to shoulder. I think the places with a sense of community that is very strong may have a stronghold. So now that's a great point that you, because you kind of are bringing that up, that I think you will see a strong sense of community. In, you know, NorCal, those people have a stronger sense of community. Los Angeles, I think you have the rich people will get off all, onto their boats. Anyone with a boat is going to have a good chance of survival because they're going to be able to separate themselves immediately from 99.9% .9 of the friction. So anywhere, anybody with a boat, they're slipping out. You know, they're slipping out on that soft um, H2O carpet, that water. The Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico. Fuck, probably people out there in Lake Huron. You know, people out there stunting in the middle, tying a couple boats up. You know, bringing a bottle of, uh, uh, you know, a, a couple cases of Red's Apple Ale and cracking off out there. I mean, it, I mean I, I, I'll just say this. I would not stand here and fight for California. Now, in the beginning, I might have to, to defend my, my territory. I would, you know, I would band together with some of the people here in, uh, in the building that I live in. I would make sure that my love, people that I love that are close by, if I could, that they are taken care of. But, but I, I, dude, I'll tell you, I'm headed straight probably over there to Louisiana, Texas. That's where I would probably go. I'd probably try to stop in Colorado on the way if I could. But I appreciate the call, Mondo. Let's hear more. Yo, C.O., this is Alex from Colorado. Speak of the devil right here. Speak of that uh, of that red rock holder right here, that devil, Ca uh, Colorado. Let's hear more. Talking about the United States of gang gang. I'm originally from Georgia. I appreciate you telling, uh, saying that we might come out in uh, the semifinals. That's probably true. But Colorado, we got the Air Force out here. You know, we got those sky hitters. Gang, y'all got them. Okay, you got the Air Force out there, and maybe those guys, a lot of those guys are from there. Now, if they have family there, they might stay and just protect their immediate family. So at that point, you're in with the state. But otherwise, you might just have a, a graveyard of planes and a lot of dudes that, you know, only know how to play uh, Final Fantasy. And, you know, that ain't an Xbox controller in the cockpit. More? Uh, uh, we also got, you know, a little something called the Rockies from the Colorado River. Okay, so they got water. And most of these fucking yuppie states are out here sucking up our water. They wouldn't be nothing without our Colorado liquid gold. Dude, that's a huge point. 
And I do believe that California gets a lot of their water uh, from Colorado. Oh, I, it popped up before I even finished it. Um, it sells water to 95% of the South Coast region. Lake Mead, formed by Hoover Dam, is a primary reservoir in the Colorado River Basin. Uh, where do we get our water from in California? Colorado River Aqueduct. Wow. So right there. Wow. That's huge. Let's hear more. All right. Now, Colorado's definitely making the semifinals. Now we got another problem out there called Alaska. <sighs> wow. The North Pole. And I you know that Santa is going to be their general. And nobody going to shoot Santa. So that's going to be you got that when you got that people out there Chris Kringlin onward where the hell are we even going to find these people to even fight them? They're out in the middle of nowhere, man. So I think they might make it to the semis. Texas, for sure, making it to the semis. Uh, they got border agents down there, a couple infantry guys down there. So, you know, Colorado, Alaska, Texas, we're all going to make it out okay. Uh, yeah, that's what I think. All right. Stay, stay fresh. I'll stay fresh, man. Thank you. And you stay fresh. Man, Alaska, I didn't even think about that. And Alaska, they're going to have, I mean, Alaska. They... But who's going to go all the way up there and fight Alaska? You know what I'm saying? And no offense, Alaska, because I, I, I honestly, I get a lot of calls in from Alaska. But Alaska, a lot of men out there, y'all relaxing. Y'all going to come all the way down here and what, fight somebody? I don't know. I don't think so. So you guys would become, you know, probably a sovereign nation, you know, and you guys would just probably come down every now and then and trade furs to uh, some of the other, um, you know, some of the other new states that are formed. But I appreciate that that water, that water thing's huge. If Colorado stops that water, that's a wrap. That's a wrap for California. All them vegetables, all them fruits. You know, I don't think they have enough of uh, those saline sal stations that can purify and who's going to operate them. Whoo, that's huge. Let's hear more. Here we go. Yo, Theo, this is David from South Texas. I just wanted to throw my vote into the great state's war. Thanks for calling, David. Let's hear more. Um, you know, I am from Texas. I would say we probably have the best shot out of all the states to succeed in the state war. Yep, I agreed with that. Onward. Because you got to think about most of the state here is packing heat, you know, carrying guns, and that's just, we're not even in war with anybody right now. We're still, we're already carrying guns, yeah. as it is, like, right now on me. I have a huge 12-inch combat knife here in my car. Damn, I thought he was going to say cock. i like, dang, man. You got that wild cock. Just because uh, the place where I work at is kind of ghetto. And you never know what's going to go down with these homeless people walking around. But I know for a fact that, you know, most girls, women, carry a piece on them nowadays in their purse. Erection. Right there, immediately I was erect. I went from zero to full cock right there. And this cock ain't on half a tank. This thing running full with a woman with a piece, man. And no disrespect to women that don't carry guns. And sometimes I mean, a woman with a bow and arrow doesn't do it that much for him. You see a woman pull out a dang, you know, that jam up, that bang bang. <whistles> Daddy getting strong in the dome, son. You feel like my dick been doing uh, curls. Because that thing's starting to lump up and lump out more. Or, you know, in their car. But yeah, everybody here is pretty stocked up on guns and ammo and stuff. So we wouldn't need a lot of uh, guns shipped into the state. I think we would have enough to, like, spare for everybody. Uh, we'd be set on ammo as well. we got people who can make their own uh, ammo. Man, first of all, somebody making their own ammo? Come on. I ain't using somebody's bootleg-ass ammo. Where that shit's going to... Will it go straight? Is this some Australian ammo? This shit going to come back around and, you know, kill my cousin, kill little Larry? Come on, man. More? You know, reloading old bullets and stuff like that. We got the livestock, the cattle, 
oil, uh, wood, resources, anything, uh, we'd probably be set, you know. Just as you saw with Hurricane Harvey, all these Texans coming together and, uh, you know, providing for each other and fighting for each other and rescuing each other out of boats and stuff and these little canals going to Houston. We have uh, waterway access as well, so... That's true down there through Galveston. You guys do have access. And I think that's only into the Gulf of Mexico, though. Man, you know, you know, you made me think there, how greedy are people going to get, though? You know, when somebody have all that livestock and all of that, how, you know, that's going to be huge if people are willing to band together. Because I, my first thought is every, it's, they don't say every man for themselves for no reason. You know, would would it just be, oh, would we be able as humans to even band together as states? That's another question. But man, I appreciate that call. And, I, you know, a lot of good points, a lot of good uh, food for thought, a lot of good fodder, a lot of good stuff. We had another call last week. Um, and I want to see if I can, uh, man, I can't play that for you because I don't have it. But we had a, a lady that called in. And she was talking about uh, prostituting, you know, and I hate to put it like that, just straight up like that, but, but that's what it was about. You know, we had a lady that, uh, that called in was just talking about prostituting and saying her family was having tough times that she wasn't doing really well. And she had had offers. She was a young lady. She had had offers from men, high dollar amounts for some of that ass or for some sex. And it makes you, and, and and it was tough to hear that, but also, we, you know, we're, these are desperate times out here for a lot of people. You know, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a few really well-off people, and there's a lot of people who are not. And the thing is, man, there's a level of greed out there, because in order for some people to be really rich, other people have to be poor. It's got to stay like that. And I'm not saying that I'm gonna, that I'm against capitalism, that I'm against us, you know, you work hard and you get what is yours and you go forth. You know, because you got to have that competitiveness. You have to have it. I think if you just gave everybody the same amount of stuff, it, it just, it, it's not going to work. You know, because somebody's then is just going to want more than their neighbor. Or somebody, you give everybody something and everybody has a chore, but the next day, the first one person doesn't show up for their chores, then everybody hates that person and doesn't think they should have what they have. And boom, that's how it starts. And then fast forward 100 years and you have capitalism. You know, when you have every man for themselves. And it's just, you know, it's like, you know, it's not surprising that, the, you know, these are the kind of questions and things that people are calling in about. Okay, this was the call that came in. I just want to uh, let you guys get one more hit of it real quick before we get into the suggestions that came in from other callers. Onward. Hey, Theo. I kind of needed your input and opinion um, on the fact that I, I've been basically propositioned by wealthy men to enter into some sort of like a relationship. Even before I like turned 18, this has been going on, and I recently moved to L.A. Mm. and the concentration of this sort of thing is at an all-time high. And we'll stop it right there. I mean, that's just the gist of it. You know, she goes into saying that her family's having trouble and stuff like that. But let's hear some suggestions that you guys had uh, for this young lady, and I hope that she's listening. Um, I haven't heard these yet, but I am, uh, I'm excited to hear them. Here we go. Hey, Theo. This is Alexios down here in Clearwater, Florida. Alexios. And that is, um, I'm going to say that that's Greek or Spanish. Maybe Alexios. Honduran? Something. You sound like a chant, like you like you could win a contest. I don't know what kind of contest, though. You know, maybe some flamenco. But thank you for calling Alexios. Man, I feel like my tongue just came even after I said that. Alexios. Let's hear more. Thank you for calling. I'm calling in regards to that girl that's thinking of getting into prostitution. Like, my thoughts are, like, if she's doing it for herself, then I don't really see a problem with it, you know? Because it's her body. She can do whatever she wants with it. But if she's doing it for her family... I think she's going to start developing animosity at some point for her family, you know, and resentment. And also, what's the number that she'll need to make in order to make impact with her family, you know? That's a great point. Yeah, you do. That's true. 
Because a lot of times we do things and we, you know, if, if I say I did that for somebody, they're, uh, will your family ever be able to thank you or make you feel welcome enough so that you, um, you know, you feel like you don't have to, you know, like you feel like that's not something you would do again? You know, will your family ever be able to, you know, make thank you enough or make you feel repaid enough where you wouldn't hold it against them? I don't know if that's possible. You know, I, I just don't know if that's possible. Let's hear more. Like, you know, like how much money will she have to make? I don't know. I think that's like a slippery slope. You know, if she's doing it for herself, that's fine. But she's going to be doing it for a family. You know, it's good to take care of family. But at some point, you have to take care of yourself. And also, if your family finds out where she's getting the money from, they're also going to be judging her. So it's like a lose-lose situation. And it's also going to affect your future life, and it will impact your personality. I just think that the best thing she could do for her family is be there for them emotionally and love them. As long as they know that she loves them, that's, as, that's about as much as she could do for them. It's a good call, Alexios. Those are some great points. You know, how much would be enough? And when you start into that, how, you know... When does it end? It's just it's a dangerous world. Alexios, thank you for the call. Let's hear another one. Here we go. Hey there, CEO. It's Robin from Atlanta. Hey, Robin from Atlanta, one of the semifinalist states in the War of the States. More? I called in to talk to the 18-year-old who's thinking about selling her cooter. <laughs> this really upset me. Um, call in to listen to your show and laugh and think about things, but this one got me. And yeah, and I'm sorry about that. I know, look, I, I know sometimes we get on, you know, I don't know if I'm sorry about it. Sometimes we get on tough topics, man. You know, and I, I, on stage, you come see this hitter, I'll hit him, boy. I'll Sammy Sosa. You know what I'm saying? I'll show up with a bat in my hands and a needle in my ass, bruh. I'll be Sammy Sosa McGuire. You know, I'll be Sammy Sosa McGuire, uh, Jeter, fucking whoever else out there. But, you know, you come see me on this podcast, sometimes things get real in here. More. Let's hear more. Thank you, Robin. Bonnie, and I want to talk directly to her by first saying, who told you that your family's debt is your responsibility? That's bullshit. I mean, that you can't take care of yourself yet. So what makes you think you can take care of yourself and them? Everybody dreams of making a big life for their family and giving them a house and showering them with love, but you can't do that yet. And that's a great point. You know, especially at your age, young lady, I'm going to support Robin's uh, suggestion there that, yeah, you have this dream that you want to help your family so much, but you don't see all the ramifications of some of your choices yet. You can't see them at your age. More? That's miles and miles away. And you don't really go up from being a hooker. There's no end of the corporate chain there. I think what bothers me the most is that the sex... And I, and I don't disagree with that overall, but there's a lot of hookers out here in Los Angeles who are probably CEOs right now, you know. And I'm not saying Chelsea Handler, but I maybe wouldn't be surprised. You know, I think there's a lot of, you know, people that have, you know, hypothetically been a hooker to make their way to the top. More? The sex trade business is a real business. I mean, someone finds you selling high-dollar pussy, and they're going to want in on it, and they're not going to ask you. Wow. Man, that's heavy, and that shit just got Russian all of a sudden. Didn't it seem Russian suddenly? Suddenly you just felt a bunch of Russian dudes enter the room? More? I mean, people disappear off the face of this earth every day in this business, and it's scary. And I don't know who these men are that are propositioning you. You make them sound like complete strangers. I mean, if that doesn't send up some warning bells for you, I don't know what to say. But I think it does send up warning bells because you've already said that this is something that you you know is wrong. Maybe not morally wrong, because I certainly want everybody to to enjoy the fruits of life. Um, don't hold back. But this is not the time, and this is not the thing to launch your career, right? Yeah, and I um yeah, and I don't think that she's trying to launch a career, but. Yeah, but this is, isn't the path. Thank you for that call, Robin. Uh, here we have another call. Here we go. And I know I'm just jumping call to call here, but, you know, I, part of me doesn't want to comment too much on this personally because I already did the other day. And, um, you know, uh, I just want to hear y'all's suggestions. Here we go. I'm calling in regards to the young lady calling in about prostituting herself out a little bit for some money to help the family. She didn't sound like she really wanted to do that to me. And so my advice to her is don't do that. There's always another way 
to get past something. And I don't know, I grew up with mom and three sisters, and it would fucking kill me inside to hear one of them doing something like that. And there you go. And there's that message. I don't know if uh, the young lady has a brother or a sibling or whatever. There you go. That's that message. That that's that voice of that. And and you know sometimes that's what it is about people calling into this to this podcast and this show. Sometimes that that thing you hear that you, the 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 call that comes in from a caller that that might just be you know it doesn't even matter who they are. It could be a that could just be the voice of a brother or a father or a sister or a mother or a an aunt. And that's what you need to hear. You know that that brother right there. That's any brother. That's in that 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 gentleman who called. I don't know if he gave his name right there. That's any. That's any gentleman. That's any brother. Probably he's calling on behalf of their sister. You know, or there if they, you know, and giving that thought. Yeah, it's a uh, that's a sticky one. You know, how do you get in a in a place inside yourself? Were you able to do that? I don't know. And I don't know how bad you know things are for you young lady but you know being there for your family 100 percent, they're gonna respect that i know that but uh you know and i don't know if you've already made some choices or whatever if you have you know you can always change things you know one of the worst um things i've ever heard is that a leopard never changes its spots i don't believe that i believe that with effort and willingness a leopard can can look like anything it wants to just take a little bit of I'll just take a little bit of time. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here today with me. You know we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. You know I will. Uh, I already told you the dates where I'll be at. I want to thank everybody. That hamster ranch video will be coming out in a few days. Um, you know a Monday's episode we'll be talking about uh, relationships, marriage, and that sort of thing. And I'll give all that into you guys uh, on Monday. And sorry if this episode is a little heavy, man. This ain't, you know, my, my, some of my anxiety does feel gone. Sometimes it's just got to have a place to talk, and this is the place that I have right now. And sometimes, we'll, you know, this will be funny, and sometimes it'll be whatever. It's a conversation. That's what we're having here. This is a conversation. And, it's, you know, you guys help me think of things sometimes that I don't want to think about in ways that I can't think about things. You know, together we make a, you know, I feel like we make a pretty unique shape. I do believe that. Thank you guys for being with me. Um, thank you, uh, Gray Block Pizza. Thank you for everybody's support. Oh, I did get this gift. You know, uh, I got a gift last week, and I just want to read the card came in the mail. It said, Happy Valentine's Day, Sugar Bear, from your Hamp Squad, Kevin and Nancy J, and Haley and Loretta and Wanda. And, uh, and this was a Valentine that they sent me. And I get things from time to time, and I don't always thank people on here. Um, but they sent me this Valentine, and I'm going to crack this header right here so everybody can see what Daddy got infected with through the mail here. Ooh, man, these packages are so strong. Ooh, that astronaut ice cream. That's what I got. Oh, that cookies and cream, vanilla ice cream sandwich, all my favorite flavors. And this is my favorite dessert. And if you never had astronaut ice cream, it's a great snack to have. It's a great dessert. It's only 140 calories. And astronauts eat it. To be thinking that you can be digesting and throwing into your gullet the same thing that a man on the moon had? Come on, what's that in your mouth? Mmm. Tastes like, uh, tastes like the atmosphere. That's what it tastes like. It tastes like I'm the first person to do something. You know, be inspired. Be inspired. Thank you guys for my wonderful gift. Thank you, Hamp Squad. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, love you guys. You guys be good. I'll talk to you soon. Celebrate me.